Uh, okay, guys. So I'm gonna go over the chrono. I really want people to learn this, um, just so you can, you know, get it like a. This is like an intro way into the class or a way to play the class that you might think is a little too intimidating. I'm gonna sort of detail how not not a benchmark stream. I'm just gonna try to showcase that this build is very strong. Uh, where a lot of its utility lies and uh, and how you don't actually have to do all of the crazy stuff that you see in the benchmark in order to make good use of this build. Let's, let's do this. Let's do this, guys. So this is the Chrono. I'm going to do uh, just the intro on the Chrono DPS build so you can see uh, just kind of how complicated it looks if you're doing it normally, okay? Okay, so over 50k burst, right? Like, that's what we're hoping for. Somewhere 52 to 54. I think that's really what we're looking for. You can see uh, that there's a lot of things going on, right? Like, if you would have just watched me do that, if you pulled up the YouTube video um, of the benchmark and you were like, hey, you know, like, I want to play P Chrono and that's what you saw, it could be really, really intimidating. And I've been playing Chrono for a long time. I had a lot of people come to me back in the day and say, you know, like, hey, uh, I really want to play this build, but... It looks like a mess, like I can't really do anything with it. Um, or or Merrick, I've been doing P Chrono for a while and I'm getting really, really bad numbers. And they were quoting me things that were kind of like crazy to me, like really, really low numbers that just seemed bizarre. Uh, so it, it, it occurred to me that people were getting really hung up on and messed up on things in the Chrono build that were not at all necessary. Like you're, you're allowing things that are not that much of a damage increase to actually decrease your damage by getting flustered by them so much. So eventually what I did, Excelsior, yeah, dude, the rotation is great, right? I agree. Uh, but so what I basically did was I wanted to teach everyone in my guild uh, base, like where the essence of the damage really lies, right? It, is, it isn't in a lot of the things that people were getting confused about. It is actually in the loop much more than it is in any of the complicated stuff so when i uh what i did was i demoed the build for my guild um without any of the extraneous stuff just to show that you can still do solid damage by removing all of the things that people were confused about so i was showing earlier that or i was trying to explain earlier that a lot of the sort of stuff that people get hang hung up on and there are a lot of variables in this build it's really weird like I've had people come to me and say you know Merrick outside of the intro how, how and when do I use gravity well or when in the world am I supposed to use sword 3 like sometimes they do sometimes they don't when do I do that when do I use mirror images uh, outside of the intro right the intro we know when to use it but when do I use it other than that when am I supposed to use the shatter 2 or, or shatter 3 uh, like what about Shatter 1? How, how does that work? So there's so many things. There's so many weird things to get hung up on. Um, but it's funny to see exactly where the damage comes from in this build. First of all, I just want to show you how powerful this is. If you want to get to be a decent Chronomancer, the, the, the first and foremost thing you should keep in mind is your auto attack chain. I'm going to show you guys something kind of insane. I'm auto attacking, right? Here. Here are my hands. And if you look, I'm doing what? What is that? 20k? 20k damage? <laughs> I'm just doing nothing and it's 20... 20.3... 20 ish damage. So auto attacking is 20,000 damage in this build. The reason for that is that sword is very strong and the final attack in the auto attack chain for sword is absolutely nutty. It is a huge portion of your damage. It's crazy. So you never, ever, ever want to interrupt your auto attack chain. That is actually a pretty difficult uh, task for people to learn in, when they're first getting started in, uh, in doing DPS rotations. However, it is very important. And uh, some builds, it's incredibly important. Like Firebrand, you definitely want to do it. Um, and P Chrono is probably the most important that you don't mess it up. So if you watch this bar down here, this is how I do it. You can watch uh, this down here, Mind Gash, Mind Spike you know, etc. Uh, you can watch that flipping. I don't tend to like that. 
You can try to watch your character animation. I don't tend to like that either. What I like to do is watch these bars. It's kind of closer to the center of your screen than uh, trying to watch down here. Uh, you'll notice that the first swing of the auto attack chain does not have a cast bar. The next two do. So anytime you see the two cast bars come together, cast, cast, and then there's a gap. Cast, cast, and then there's a gap. After the cast, cast, you have finished it. The second cast bar that happens in rapid succession is actually the final attack in your auto attack chain. So that is when you would use your next skill. Uh, but this is pretty crazy, right? I mean, like 20k damage, you could you could legitimately build like a, like like a decent auto attack build when it comes to peak run up, which is pretty pretty nutty, right? If I had a brand new raider just doing this damage, uh, I wouldn't even be mad, you know. <laughs> Like, it's, that's enough damage for you to feel like you're contributing somewhat. But I just wanted you guys to see how much damage really goes into that auto attack. I think a lot of people don't know that. So try try to respect your auto attack um, chain. And then for the rest of this, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you what I mean. When we did, uh, if we do the full benchmark, right, it's like 42k. If we do what I'm going to do, we're going to remove a bunch of stuff and streamline this build. Okay, you ready? We are not going to use Gravity Well at all. Um, we're just going to use that for CC in the actual fight when we want to. We're not going to use it. We're not going to use Mirror Images at all. In fact, we're going to get rid of it. We're just going to use Signet of Illusions so you just passively create an extra clone every few seconds. It's literally all it's going to do. Okay? We are not ever going to use Sword 3. We are not ever going to use F2. We're not ever going to use F3. And here's the most important part. We are not even going to use Continuum Split. We're not gonna, like, when people do the continue or the, uh, the P-Chrono rotation that they see on Snow Crows, they watch it and they're like, oh my gosh, Continuum Split was so complicated. But once they get the intro down, every single one of them that I know has come to me and been like, dude, how TF do I do the second continuum split? Like, when do I do that? And how do I do that? That's the part that I hate the most. Like, I don't get it. So we're going to remove that. We're just going to remove both continuum splits. That's how crazy this is. Okay, so this is what you're going to see instead. Um, remember, what we were dealing with is like a 42k benchmark. This is going to lower that a, a bunch, but I want you to see what you're really working with here. I'm going to do just the bare minimum loop. Okay, and it looks something like this. We're just doing the loop and we're gonna shatter one. Only the first shatter every time we have three clones. That's it. First number is 39,000. Okay, we've done none of those things. We're just doing the loop. The bare minimum loop. And I'm not even being like good at this right now. Look how much auto attacking there is. Look how much time there is to pick up your eyes, look around the arena, see what mechanics are. Look at all this auto attacking, it's crazy. Okay, 38-ish K. 38K, guys, 38K. This is what I'm talking about. Like, I and, I and I definitely made some genuine mistakes there. Like real mistakes while I was trying to talk and hold on, push the talk key. Um, this build is very, very strong. Mels, are you, yeah, are you seeing what I'm saying? I didn't use K 
continuum split once or twice. I never used it. I never used Sword 3. I never used F2. I never used F3. I never used Mirror Images. I never used Gravity Well. This streamlines this build, and you still have access to all of the beautiful utility that comes with being a Chrono. Blurred Frenzy, Sword 4 Block, Extra CC. You can now use Gravity Well just for CC. You, have, you can now use Continuum Split just to double Gravity Well. You could drop Gravity Well because your boons are bad and take uh, time more because it doesn't matter. You're not, you're not going to use it anyway on fights that don't need CC. You see what I'm saying? This is, you can either use this as an intro stepping stool to get into actual and you know perfect peak Rona, or you can just play this build and do incredibly well in a very smooth uh, benchmark, which is awesome. If I had the power, I absolutely would nerf uh, P Chrono. I, I do think it's too strong, but in its current form that it has been in for a very long time, I really want everyone to like get get some use out of this. Don't be scared away from P Chrono. And if you're looking for a strong build that has a lot of utility, so let, let's look at the rest of this, right? We don't have 11k HP like you do on a Thief or a Guardian or an Ellie. You have middle of the road 16k HP. That feels good. You have activatable uh, damage mitigation in terms of Blurred Frenzy Evade and a Force Block in terms of Illusionary Repose. You have a Temporal Curtain that you can use to gather things up and in raids that is really, really, really good. Uh, and of course, like I said, you've got Gravity Well and the ability to use Continuous Split in any way that you want because you're no longer using it in terms of damage. These things together make this kit incredibly strong. Highly, highly recommend that somebody pick this up if you haven't already done. Uh, let me let me scroll up. I feel like I missed something. Uh, Mel's is 100% convinced now. Uh, I'm 100% happy. You should definitely play this. Uh, Chaos says, I feel like the loop is definitely the most important part because it's the sustained part of the rotation. That is so true. And that's really what, what drives this home. Teala says, is this sword pistol? It is not. This is sword focus. Really, really love sword focus. Uh, having a temporal curtain in a raid that you can use as a DPS is just to die for. It is in so many fights. It's beautiful. It can, it can really help you to not just be an awesome DPS, but to be able to do great, great utility and save the day in a lot of interesting ways. Uh, and yes, the exact Snow Crows build. The only difference is that we remove mirror images and put in Signet of Illusions. And that is it. That is the only difference. That's what's so crazy. Everybody is really focused on how much damage a P Chrono can do, but if you if you bring it to this level, uh, remember 38k. What's 38k, guys? 38k is the maximum Snow Crows benchmark for for uh, Hollow Smith, right? For uh, Soul Beast, for like all of the really strong power builds. Like this can be you with a lot less effort and a lot more utility. This class has got crazy utility and. Here's the other kicker. A lot of damage in this build is ranged. Okay, like freely ranged, like really genuinely ranged, right? Like it's it's really beautiful to be able to make big sweeping movements around oils in Deimos and not lose any damage. Yeah, every one of your focuses, uh, I mean, every one of your illusions are ranged, right? Look at this. I'm casting... I'm casting all of these illusions, these these things over everything that I just did was completely ranged. And you don't even have to be watching the boss. <laughs> if you have a skill that has a cast time and then does damage, right? Not a channel skill like Blur Frenzy, but a skill that like you drop a well and you have to cast it before the well drops or a bomb before it blows up. And say KC is coming from the sky and he's about to fall down. If you know exactly when that's going to happen, cut out the waste, right? If you wait for a boss to, to enter into being targetable again, and then start doing cast times with skills that are delayed, like Big Ol' Bomb or something, um, you are, you're wasting, you're taking all the waste and putting it in the bracket where you're actually able to do damage to the boss. If you can get the waste in the section of before the boss is damageable, before Veil Guardian becomes damageable in the center of the arena, before Gorsaval um, becomes targetable again after the Four Spirits, uh, before Samurai comes out of the... Um, the alcove if you can do any pre-casting before that you're eliminating waste but another form of eliminating waste is actually ranged damage if i have to run in i i should be doing range damage if i have to run around in oil you need to know what your range damage options are and so if i had to run around in oil to start doing damage to deimos things like this actually make a big difference right like the ability to do that many of casts in a row 
that are fully ranged, right? Like if I'm having to run around the thing and I go cast, 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 and then I'm back in melee range, right? I've lost nothing. I've lost nothing, no damage from having to run around in oil and everyone else has had to lose a lot. And so that is where, like when you get into that mindset, it starts to change a lot. Uh, Katrina, yes, of course. I love doing stuff like this. If you guys are into this, I could teach other builds as well. <laughs> this could be fun. Um, okay, so basically in the normal P Chrono intro, you would start on focus because you do Phantasmal Warden and then mirror images and then immediately weapon swap and then do Phantasmal Swordsman. And then just before Phantasmal, Phantasmal Swordsman has finished, like the moment before the cast bar finishes, uh, you, you enter Continuum Split. And so then it does like a whole mess of stuff after that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to start in sword because our Phantasmal Swordsman is the one that does the most damage. This is actually what we want to cast twice. So since our uh, Signet of Ether refreshes the cooldown on all of our Phantasms, we want to be able to get two casts of Swordsman and only one cast of Warden. So that's why we're going to start in sword instead. So we're going to go Swordsman and then Enchanter. And now that these are both down, we're going to use signet of ether to reset both of them and then we're gonna do swordsman again and then weapon swap and do warden and then finish off with the second enchanter the reason why we do that is we want to get the cooldown on weapon swap going immediately right every time you weapon swap there's 10 seconds before you can weapon swap again we want to get that going as early as possible otherwise we could do uh swordsman disenchanter E a signet of ether then swordsman then disenchanter again and then weapon swap and do warden but we'd rather do uh swordsman disenchanter signet of ether swordsman weapon swap warden and then S disenchanter if you can get that little thing down that's it that's the whole challenge for you nothing else is going to be complicated after that that's really the name of the game here so it's going to look like this And then Blur Frenzy. And look, now we're in the auto attack stage. We're going to hit Shatter when there's three clones. We're going to hit number seven when it's when it's ready to go. But look, I'm just auto attacking, dude. Now I got Blur Frenzy. I can weapon swap, so then I know I can weapon swap. As soon as I can weapon swap, I should, have, I should weapon swap. Now we're just going to use everything off cooldown. Blurred Frenzy. We're going to use Disenchanter. We're gonna, and then we're going to do the Wombo Combo again. We're going to wait. See? Wombo Combo is ready. Five, six, five. Weapon swap, five, nine. That's what it is for me. I know your, your skill numbers are going to be different. But for me, it's going to be 5, 6, 5, weapon swap, 5, 9. And if you can make yourself get next, get used to that little rhythm, uh, everything else is easy. Right? So we'll do it again. So I'm, I'm getting ready. Oh, 9 should already be on cooldown. So here we go. 5, 6, 5, weapon swap, 5, 9. Okay. Now I'm going to keep... Just auto attacking. I know that I can uh, weapon swap soon, so I, I will. I don't want to interrupt my auto attacks, but as soon as I can, I do weapon swap. And now look, five and six are really close together. So now I'm going to use this when I can, but five and six are going to be used in combo again to do the wombo combo. Just here it comes again. And five, six, five, weapon swap, five, nine. There it is again. And then we're just using the rest of the stuff that we've got off cooldown. Just use it off cooldown. Just use it off cooldown. Um, Outside of the wombo combo, we're really just using these off cooldown. So even even weapon swap, we're using that off cooldown. And then we can weapon swap and see that swordsman is ready, so we use it. But then look, once we do, we're going to use this as it comes off. But look, five and six are going to come off cooldown at the same time. And then the wombo combo starts all over again. Here we go. Five, six, five, weapon swap, five, nine. And the rest of it is just using stuff off cooldown. So uh, I hope that gives some introductory info for P Chrono. Um, I don't do stuff in the SFTA a lot. Like I'm not like a benchmark maker, but I'm very, very good at bringing this knowledge into actual raids themselves. Uh, Sky, dude, yes. Thanks, Mega Little Lapper Chrono. Yes, I'm so, so glad. Let's go, dude. Um, if I can help make another person enjoy raiding in this game, guys, that is like the dream. Uh, what were you casting on the run since Flint Down? Okay, so remember the whole, uh, the whole Wombo combo that I was doing that entire thing? is ranged right so i could go um here i'll just i'll just start it again so say i've got this uh this golem and it's like an oil right say i gotta run around this whole thing and i'm over here everything i'm about to do is ranged right 
five, seven, nine, six, five, weapon swap, five, nine, and then I can run in. Like, all of that is range. Like, everything that does the most damage is range. <laughs> and guys, I really don't mind going in one-on-one -on -one and training people. Uh, if you want to come support the stream, if you're in our channel, you're a follower, you're a subscriber, I, I want to help you. I don't mind any time, day or night. If you guys have questions, hit me up on Discord. Uh, if you want me to come into the to the SFTA with you and work on a rotation with you, I'll do that anytime. There's a lot of people here who could probably speak to that fact. I, I don't mind. I really want to help you guys out. You guys help me out more than you know. Uh, so I really want to, I really want to return that favor.